community of practice for LBS, tips and tools from the front line. I want to give you some information about this um, committee of online community of practice. It's made up of staff from regional networks across Ontario, as well as Joanne Cottery from Community Literacy of Ontario, Arlene Cronin from ACE Online, and our facilitator today, Sarah Stalker, who is the behind the scenes expert for all of us except for when you need to talk to a technician, but she gets all of this laid out for us and keeps us all on top of things, an excellent resource in our committee. Online Community of Practice for LBS has been coordinating webinars for LBS for the field for three years, and it came about because we understand that it's hard for practitioners to attend training when they're busy helping clients to increase their literacy skills. So we decided to bring training to your desk. Each committee member has again suggested in their business plans to keep this series going. So we're hoping to be back with you in September with more webinars. Feel free to suggest topics for next year's series in the evaluation that will be available at the end of the webinar. As always, the webinar is being recorded, as Sarah just mentioned, and she will be sending you a link to it after the session today. Also know that we are having someone transcribe the webinars and they will be available on the Learning Networks of Ontario's website. I want to take a moment to thank all of the e-channel providers who have presented the first four webinars in this series. Now for the presenter today. For the past 16 years, literacy instructors in the Niagara region have been meeting every two months through a forum called the Common Frontline Group. This group is comprised of at least one representative from each of the EO-funded LBS programs in the Niagara region, Anglophone, Francophone, and Native. The past year, this past year, the group focused on digital literacy and developed a list of online websites, resources, and tools that they commonly use with their learners. The webinar will highlight these digital resources and share practical strategies the group uses in service delivery. And our presenter today is Jackie Catterick. Jackie has been working in the LBS field since 1999. She's taught for 15 years at the District School Board of Niagara, and she also served as the Ontario Works Client Assessor for Literacy Link Niagara for three years. Currently, Jackie supports learners with mental health challenges. Jackie creates a warm and inviting atmosphere for her learners and enjoys finding, a new, finding new digital resources and tools for them to use. Jackie leaves work each day feeling she's made a small difference in the lives of those who really need her help. And we are so appreciative today, Jackie, to have you share with us those tools that you and that online group and that uh, common group, uh, frontline worker group, that have put together. We're looking forward to uh, hearing all about it. So I will turn off my mic, and when I see a question pop up, I will and you have a pause, I'll give it to you, okay? But it's over to you, Jackie. Thank you. Thank you very much, Deborah. Welcome, everybody, and thank you for joining us today. Um, the Common Frontline Focus Group started, like Deborah said, 16 years ago. Uh, we look at a lot of different things as frontline instructors. We look at challenges we face in the classroom. We look at resources that are paper-based and digital. We talk about uh, how to incorporate uh, different learning strategies into our classrooms. We talk about the daily struggles of the paperwork and the filing, and we complain a lot about CAMS. Um, today's project is all about, or our focus for the year, is all about how we use digital literacy in LBS. All of our classes are very different. Like Deborah said, we have members from school boards, we have members from community locations, we have people who organize the tutors, we have instructors of small groups, of large groups, we have college, we have deaf, and we also have francophone classes. Um, so when we come together at the table, the focus is to help each other. We get lots of the topics going and 
we like to keep our focus, so our focus this year was digital literacy and how we all use it differently. Today's webinar is going to look at some tools that we all agreed um, were very effective for assessment, for instruction, and for professional use. We also are including our digital resource list, which of course is not ex it's not everything that is out there. It is just things that we have talked about and really um, promote. Um, we're going to talk at the end a little bit about our future focus, which is kind of exciting. And I would like to save most of the questions and answers till the end. So our Common Frontline Focus Group came out of the um, Common Understanding of Assessment Project in 2002 by Robin Cook Ritchie. So we, like Deborah said, we meet every two months, uh, usually after the literacy service plan meeting. Um, and it's just, we've really bonded. A lot of us have been on it since the very beginning. And it kind of stretches outside of just that meeting. We call each other, we text each other, we email each other on the fly as we need it. So it's a community. So some of our past folks have been a referral protocol that reached across the Niagara region. We would actually sit and take case studies and decide, well, you have Joe, and these are his, his this is his history. Where is he best served in the Niagara region? And we would talk about it, and then we mapped it out. Uh, we also looked at the culminating tasks, and we grouped activities, learning activities that go along and, and move the student forward towards being successful with a culminating task. We also have a learner celebration every other year that the members of the Frontline Focus Group organize. We bring together learners from across the region from all the different programs and we celebrate a great two years. We are a formal group with terms of reference. We have a revolving chair. Um, communication is very open. It's very natural. And sometimes we go off topic and do what's needed for, the, for any instructor who's struggling with a certain issue. Currently, Brand Platinkus from Niagara College is our college rep. Our school board reps are myself and Laura Prinzhall, and from the Catholic board, Tina DeLuca. Um, I also have um, a deaf program alongside mine, so I represent them. We have the native stream, Yvette Bosher, Jessica Durant, Teresa Gillis, and Marie Beliveau. We have the francophone stream covered with Natalie Carrier from Les Bessé Communitaire and Lorraine Baudin from College Boreal. And for our community locations, we have Ingrid Friesen from the Learning uh, Centers of Niagara, Pura Palmieri and Arlene High from Niagara West Learning Centers, and Gail Whiteside also from the Learning Centers of Niagara. So in the past 16, sorry, 18 months, we have had this focus, and today's presentation will be about how we use digital literacy during assessment, both intake, ongoing, and at exit, for instruction, and dabbling a little bit into how we use it professionally. We would like to know more about you and how long you have been in LBS. Can you take a minute just to give us a click? And oh, we're getting all lots those. of responses. That's wonderful. Just click your screen and uh, we'll, we'll get a, a picture that we can share with everybody, Jackie, if you're comfortable. That is great. Uh, just a few more uh, who haven't responded yet. I'll just wait another minute or so. Please Got lots just... of veterans out there. And, and we may have some guests who've joined us and they're most welcome who aren't actually directly in LBS too and, and that's, that's also very legitimate and helpful to have them here. Okay, let's show the results, Jackie. There you go.
awesome. So I'm going to move right on. Hopefully some of you vets out there will be able to chime in and give me your information on how you use these tools. The first one we chose was readtheory.org. Read Theory offers learners a vast library of reading comprehension content. Read Theory's adaptive approach fosters improvement by automatically meeting learners at their own individual ability levels. Sign up takes seconds and no, no time is spent selecting assignments for learners. Progress is shown in a printable report and the program is completely free. All students logging in for the first time take a placement test, which, which starts them at a third grade level by default. If that material is too difficult, the pretest will immediately adjust to show first and second grade material instead. Similarly, if it's too easy, the pretest will progressively move up to grades four, five, and beyond. We use this site in several ways. As a backup assessment to our intake assessment, as an ongoing evaluation of our learner's progress, as a warm-up for independent practice, and at exit to show learner's progress. Oh, I'm going to go back. So our tips and tools for using Read Theory as an assessment, the reports can be printed out. This is a report on your screen and it can be put in the learner's file. Read Theory gives you an unbiased assessment of a learner's reading ability. We use it as a starting point for a learner. Since initial assessments tend to be very stressful for a potential new learner, the results of a paper-based face-to-face assessment are sometimes not accurate. Having Read Theory as a backup, then once the learner has met you and is more relaxed, will give us a more impartial evaluation of their reading level. Seeing the results can be a difficult thing for a learner. They always seem to think they read better than they actually do. Since they have access to their own results, they can see what grade level they are reaching. This can be a cause of stress or disappointment for our learners, so that's why I kind of wait before I present it to them. The next one we chose was North Star Digital Literacy. The North Star Digital Literacy Project defined the basic skills needed to perform tasks on computers and online. The ability of adults to perform these basic computer and online tasks can be assessed through online self-guided modules. Included are basic computer literacy standards and modules in 10 main areas, basic computer use, Internet, Windows operating systems, Mac operating systems, email, Microsoft Word, social media, Microsoft Excel, Microsoft PowerPoint, and information literacy. No sign up is required for North Star Digital Literacy. Progress is shown in a printable report. The program is completely free. Sarah, can you play the video? My name is Gustavo. I am in computer class at the Hub Center. I'm a 60-year-old displaced worker. I learned about North Star through the public library. If you if you are not computer if you are not computer literate, you're going to be left behind. The North Star Digital Literacy Assessment is a computer skills assessment. It would take me sometimes three hours to navigate a website. Prior to taking these classes, um, the internet was a totally different world. The tool is really great at helping us uh, assess exactly where the uh, participants are in their, um, their computer literacy. Before Northstar, it was hard to know when someone had 
the skills that they needed. After the assessment, there's a printout showing you your mistakes, where your strong points are, where your weaker points are. Resumes with Word documents uh, communicate with attachments and uh, emails. So we learn all the basic parts of the computer, how to use a mouse and how to write and left click. So I did that and I passed all of them because I, I, I love, I want to know it. I can do now my writing in Microsoft Word and send it to my teacher with email. It gives people something to strive for, um, to get those certificates. It also allows them to actually put on the resume, um, which is, of course, from my perspective, the ultimate goal. I mean, there's no way to get around it in most cases. Employees are going to look for people that have basic computer skills. And with that soaring confidence came a a love for the computer. People who didn't know how to use computers at all end up coming in and actually helping the people who are sitting next to them. It's amazing. You know, they learn it, then they know it, and then pretty soon they're leaning over and they're showing how it's done. It's amazing. Learn it, know it, and show it. Learn it, know it, show it. <laughs> learn it, know it, show it. North Star is an assessment, it's not a curriculum. So you're not going to put your students on North Star and it's going to teach them how to use a computer. What it will do, we'll talk them through uh, an assessment and an orientation that will end up giving you this report that is up on the screen. So there's no cost to complete this online assessment and each unit is only about Sorry, each unit has a quick four-minute orientation that shows the learner how to use the assessment. The, ass the orientation and the assessment are read in a clear voice at a nice pace. The computer the user uses, sorry, the computer the learner uses to, must have sound. So we have lots of earphones. Uh, the learner can click to have things repeated if they needed, and they can choose not to answer. Some of the questions must be read by the learner, so I never go very far, just in case I'm needed. At the end of the assessment, this result sheet is generated. And it lists the skills that the learner is, has mastered, and then on the right, the skills that they need to improve on. These skills can be lifted and put right on a learner plan. I also keep a copy in the learner's file. North Star can be used at intake to determine where an instructor can start with a new learner. It can be used before a milestone to show the learner's readiness to move on to the next level. We have used North Star as a tool to help learners develop their own learner plan in a manage their own learning learner plan so they can see what they need to work on. North Star can also be used at exit to show progress. I do find that once in a while I'll get a learner who sees the not a passing score and get a bit upset and want to go back in and redo it all. So I always reinforce to them before they start that this is what they're going to see at the end and our focus is not a passing score because we want to see what they need to learn, that this is what this tool shows. The next website we decided to take a look at is Quill.org. Quill is a nonprofit educational technology organization to get it dedicated to improving student writing. It provides over 300 writing, grammar, and proofreading activities. The online lessons engage learners in this writing process through web applications teaching grammar and writing skills. Quill provides four different tools. Quill Diagnostic to assess a learner's writing needs and assign a personalized learner plan. Quill Connect and Quill Grammar to build sentence structure and grammar skills. And Quill Proofreader to hone editing skills. Instructors have a dashboard that shows them how their students are progressing. 
Learner and instructor sign up is simple. Progress is shown in a printable report. The program is completely free. I'm going to focus now just on the diagnostic. Quill provides a diagnostic that assesses students on their writing skills and then rec recommends up to eight weeks of instruction based on the results. The diagnostic tests, tests eight to ten distinct skills to see where the learners stand at the beginning of their Quill journey. There are currently two diagnostics a, students can, a student can take, the sentence structure diagnostic and the ELL diagnostic for English language learners. Both diagnostics will create a personalized learner plan for the students based on their performance in the diagnostic. For tips and tools, each section in Quill has an overview and a walkthrough, so you can see how you could use them with your learners. If you scroll to the bottom, you can see a preview. This is an American tool. So the stories, the sentences, just the themes are American. So sometimes that gets on the nerves of my Canadian students. This tool is not meant for a low level learner. I wait until I have collected several writing samples and make sure that the learner is a strong enough reader before I have the learner complete a diagnostic to ensure that they will not be overwhelmed by the level of the content. I only use Quill for my level two learners and above. The individualized learner plan can be used to choose task-based learning activities to show progress. So the diagnosis is going to show you where their skills are, and then you can use the task-based learning activities that highlight the skills that they have learned. This content is not directed at literacy learners but it also doesn't have childlike stories, sentences, pictures, etc. So I've never really had anybody complain about the chickies and the ducks. This is an example of the teacher instructor dashboard. So it lists all the students in the class, where their marks are, uh, what how many questions they completed. Sometimes it is timed, gives you how many are not proficient, how many are nearly proficient, how many are, are proficient. It also, once you go into a specific student, it will show you where they're struggling and where they're not. So you can then assign different lessons for them to move forward. I use um, the dashboard um, quite often in what I'm pulling for my students for their next practice skill-based um, lessons. Um, they can also look at their skills and see their progress. Okay. We're going to move into how we use some of our digital resources for instruction. And the very first one we're going to look at is a popular one, GCF Learn Free. GCF Learn Free has helped millions of people around the world learn the essential skills they need to live and work in the 21st century. From Microsoft Office to writing and reading emails to math to everyday life skills to employment skills, GCF Learn Free offers more than 180 topics, including more than 2,000 lessons, 800 videos, 55 interactives and games, there's tutorials, there's teacher guides and resources. They also feature the most up-to-date technology, which is more than I can say for my program. <laughs> no sign-up is required. However, sign up for a learner account is very easy and it can help to track their progress. Instructors do not have a dashboard like the other sites, but learners can print off reports and attach them to an email to give their, to their instructors. Progress can be tracked by completion of unit quizzes. The program is completely free. Sarah, can you play the video?
learning can open doors to a better life. GCFLearnFree.org is a new approach to learning. It's learning that fits your needs and schedule. Over one million learners have taken advantage of our free lessons, and we're adding new content every day. We offer thousands of lessons spanning over 85 topics. Math, Money, Computer Basics, Microsoft Office, Career, and Reading. We recognize that people have different learning styles. This is why we offer lessons using video, audio, text, games, and interactive activities. I've stopped the video because there's a couple of comments, Jackie, from people who are not seeing or uh, perhaps hearing it. Um, I'm wondering if the audience could give us a green check mark um, uh, if, if they were able to see it and hear it. So we'll continue if most of you can. Okay, we're, we don't have too much more, but I just wanted to let those who can't see it and hear it know we will be sending uh, the link so that you can watch it on your end when it works for you. Thank you. Sorry, Jackie, I'll press play again. No worries. Interactive activities. We offer lessons in Espanol at gcflatino.org. It's learning designed to fit your needs, and it's 100% free. We are GCFLearnFree.org and GCFLatino.org, creating opportunities for a better life. Before I go on, Susan, if we could take a minute at the end for you to tell us about how you proctor on North Star, that would be awesome because I would like to learn how to do that too. Okay, so GCF Learn Free has great math tutorials. Each unit has an introduction, a lesson, and a video. There is reading required, so I use the lessons as a group with my low-level class so I can read them aloud. Some units have post-tests or assessments, and the assessment results can be printed out. We did not include GCF Learn Free Math in the assessment section of this webinar because they're more like post-tests than they are lesson assessments, or more lesson assessments than they are personalized assessments. I was just reading what Susan wrote. She said she didn't have a mic, but she she needs we need to contact North Star Digital Literacy and apply to be a proctoring site and training is provided. I think I'm going to do that, Susan. Thank you. GCF Learn Free Reading as a program introduces literacy students to a thousand commonly used words in the English language. In order to make the program useful and approachable for adult learners, they have created content content that features a conversational tone and includes entertaining and relatable examples. There are categories for letters for learners who are just beginning to read and who need extra practice recognizing, recognizing letter sounds. The Letter Explorer allows learners to see every letter in the alphabet. They can select a letter or letter group and they can see examples of words that include that letter. They can also click on each word and hear it spoken. This really helps with phonetic awareness and sight words. They have a word section that's great for exposing learners to a variety of words. Word Explorer shows learners a word cloud of all the words in the category. When learners select a word, they can hear the word spoken, used in context, view an image of the word, and watch that, a video that defines the word. This helps pro practice vocabulary and sight words. They have a section on text. They have more than 100 texts to a variety, in a variety of formats, including short stories, ads, articles, and letters. The texts are grouped by categories and include related vocabulary words. Learners can read on their own or follow along while listening to the text. They also have the option to select vocabulary words to review them in more depth. And they can review reading comprehension questions as well. This helps with reading fluency and reading comprehension. 
There is a video dictionary that features short and ent entertaining video clips that explore and define the words in each category. Learners see and hear a thousand words used in a variety of situations, from very serious to laugh out loud funny. There are also activities with a collection of game-like tools, word sounds, fill-ins, blast off, and sound match. I noticed someone said that the computer lessons are amazing, and I agree. GCF offers computer tutorials, mouse tutorials, keyboarding skills, and internet basics. There is, a re there is reading required, so use the lessons as a group if you're working with low-level readers. Some units have quizzes. The assessment results can be printed out. Topics include what is a computer, hardware basics, software basics, using a computer, setting up a computer, getting started with your first computer, and getting to know the operating system. There's also use the internet, connecting to the internet, and getting started with the internet. There's also a section on safety and maintenance of a computer system. The lessons offer a mix of text, video, interactives, and challenges for learners to practice what they have learned. You can also learn the basics of Access, Excel, Outlook, PowerPoint, Publisher, and Microsoft Word. Learners will also learn tips, tricks, shortcuts, and even more better and more to better use the programs in work and life. My favorite thing is when a learner teaches me how to do something on Microsoft Word. That's the best. I've highlighted these podcasts here in the Work and Money podcast section of GCF Learn Free. I found them, and I think they are great tools to use for A3, find and use information, extract information from films, broadcasts, and presentations. Each podcast provides a brief introduction to the content, which, that can put, which you can put up on the whiteboard or via projector with sound. Then the podcast can be run. There are several podcasts in each series. If the learner enjoys the podcast, they su could su subscribe to future casts via iTunes. I could spend the entire hour talking about GCF Learn Free, but the best way to learn about it is to explore it yourself and with your learners. There is a teacher's guide at www support.gcflearnfree.org. Next is Khan Academy. They call it a personalized learning resource for all ages. Khan Academy offers practice exercises, instructional videos, and a personalized learning dashboard that empowers learners to study at their own pace in and outside of a classroom setting. It tackles math, science, computer programming, history, art history, economics, and more. We use it primarily for math. The Math Missions Guides guides learners from the basics of calculus, or from the basics to calculus, oh my goodness, calculus, using state-of-the-art adaptive technology that identifies strengths and learning gaps. There are no ads and no subscription fees. Sign up is really quick and easy. They offer lessons in math by subject, math by grade, science and engineering, computing, arts and humanities, economics and finance, test prep, college and careers. Some reading is required, so be sure you know your student's reading level before you set them on Khan Academy. Please note that Khan Academy has an adult learner choice for grade level, which will help make it a little bit more uh, adult in nature. They also have a help center at www.khanacademy.zendesk.com.
how we use Khan Academy. Once a learner makes an account, he can choose where to start. Khan Academy starts with a quiz and then generates lessons for the learner to complete. The online lessons do have childlike fireworks in that little rocket ship thing there. Uh, and it gives learners points to track their success. I find that some of my learners do comment on these points in a negative way. So if it's not for them, I'm not going to keep making them do Khan Academy. But for the most part, my students think it's kind of funny. So this is the learner's dashboard. It shows the learner's results at the end of a unit. These results can be screenshot and printed. This result was actually screenshot, uh, saved, and emailed to me by one of my new students. So I thought that was great. It kind of covered lots of different skills. Personally, I do not have all of my, use, my learners use Khan Academy, but I do use the videos that they have on YouTube to show different math concepts. So I will have my group around the table. Anybody who's working on a specific math concept, I will load the video, um, and I will teach, and then show the video, and then we will practice. Therefore, I am encompassing all the different learning styles in the room, seeing, hearing, and doing. I'm going to quickly go back to, uh, to Quill. So how we use Quill in the classroom. Um, since we talked about it as a diagnostic tool, and then our learners get in there and they have an account, we might as well use it. So Quill, Quill currently provides four writing tools that enables learners to build writing, grammar, and proofreading skills. Each activity is about 20 minutes in length. The activities are progressive and identify skill gaps. Once the instructor has set up a class in Quill and each member of the class completes their initial assessment, the learners are listed on the instructor's dashboard. From the dashboard, the instructor is given a listing of each learner and suggested activities for them. The instructor assigns the activities with a quick click. We all have that learner who wants constant homework. Once the learner signs up and begins lessons with Quill, the learner receives personalized instruction and, and it saves us the time of grading all that paperwork. Some of our most popular activities in my classroom are the complex sentences, comma usage, capitalization, word tense agreement, and commonly confused words. As students are working, they receive almost instant feedback on their work, and the teachers can view reports that will show which students need the most in-class help and which students are ready to advance to more challenging materials. All of these reports can be printed out. This tool is very valuable in a multi-level literacy group or class. Everyone in your small group can work on Quill at the same time, but have their own personalized lessons at their own level. This is my son, Willcat. <laughs> he went in because I wanted to make sure it was confidential, but I wanted to show my dashboard. So he did one activity, and this shows that he's completed one activity and when he did it, and I can download the report to see how he's doing. He asked me not to. But this gives you an idea of what it looks like if you don't have Quill. You can get a premium membership. I didn't even look into it because I don't need it. What I use it for, it works just great. I was part of the testing team for the diagnostic, so I'm really proud of Quill. I think it's really great. So more ways that I use Quill in my classroom. I use it usually as a quick warm-up. I teach um, four different classes, three different classes right now. Uh, an employment class uh, that is more soft skills. I teach academics two days a week. And I teach um, another employment class at a lower level one day a week. But for my academics, 
I use Quill as a warm up, get them going. They all have different uh, goals, they all have different levels, and it's really helpful. I get them in, they use Quill or they use Read Theory, and I get everybody settled, and then we start our lesson. My learners also log in for independent practice during class if they're waiting for me to finish with another learner and they have a question. Uh, they also use it as homework. Uh, they can complete it on their smartphone uh, or their tablet or on a computer. Now something I just recently learned about with Quill, and I haven't tested driven it yet, is collaborative class lessons. Apparently the lessons are 30 to 40 minutes. 45 minutes long, and they're collaborative learning sessions. The classes are interactive with the teacher modeling prompts and the class and then the class-wide discussion topics. I visualize the session to involve each learner on their own device while the instructor uses the whiteboard or a smart board. And I can't wait to try it out. There is a sample collaborative lesson to try and you practice it. If you go to the main page and type in search, it'll pop right up. Some other great resources that we shared at our meetings included Merriam-Webster's online dictionary. It has a word of the day. It has on online quizzes. There's a dictionary. There's a thesaurus. And there's great games. There's vocabulary.com which also has word games and word lookups. And the Visual Thesaurus was a popular one. Other great websites include typing.com. It's free to use. It has a sign up, which is quick and easy. The lessons are progressive, and certificates can be printed out. What I like about typing.com, I actually use it in my digital technology learner plan uh, because it's not only you know, online following instructions, but it proves that a learner can log in and sign out. A, a famous one around our site is Read, Write, Think. It has lesson plans, interactive tools, and professional development resources. BBC Skillwise, I'm sure you've all heard of it. Uh, it has English and math skills for adults, job skills, English games, math games, digital skills. Just note that all of the money skills are in pounds, and the language is a bit different, but we've been able to adapt a lot of their resources. Now into how we use things professionally. Brand story. Brand is our representative from Niagara College. She has a five-year goal of going completely digital. She has the, the great privilege of being part of the team at Niagara College with the best technology. So she has determined that since space is precious and digital gives you better access to your resources, she was going to move forward with this plan. She purchased a Windows Surface Pro and she attaches it to all her students' com computers wirelessly. She opened a cloud account on OneDrive to share, store, and access shared materials. Literally, when she comes in and tells us, we all just stand there with our mouths open going, oh my gosh, I'm still using Windows 7. Trans she uses um, her digital way of doing things um, by transcribing hard copies into Word save them on the hard drive and cloud. She prints wirelessly to a printer. She finds it more efficient with less physical strain. She's eliminating file cabinet space. And she finds it easier to access documents when serving multiple learner needs. And we all know about that. Next is Andrew's story. Now, I get the privilege of working with Andrew every day. He is a very technologically advanced guy. He is a literacy, literacy and basic skills instructor with the District School Board of Niagara. He teaches several different groups, 
mo mostly four to six learners at a time. His learners generally identify as being on the autism spectrum. He uses Google Classroom and finds his learners really respond to this way of interacting with him and each other. So I'm going to talk a bit about Google Classroom. Classroom is a free web service for schools, nonprofits, and anyone with a personal Google account. Classroom makes it easy for learners and instructors to connect inside and outside of the classroom. We will watch this quick video to get an idea of how Google Class gets, can be used, and then we will look at how Andrew uses the different features of Google Classroom. Sarah, can you play the video? So Andrew uses Google Calendar to list dates for learning activities and milestones through the use of the Assignments tab. This way the learners can see what's coming up in conjunction with their daily schedule. He also uses Google Calendar to keep himself organized and Google Classroom and Calendar combined, making it easy for him to see what needs to be done all in one place. Classroom is a free web service for schools, nonprofits, and anyone using a Google account. Classroom makes it easy for learners and instructors to connect inside and outside of the classroom. I'm just going to move a little ahead. So we're going to provide you with a copy of our ever-growing resource list. Sarah will send it out to you. We have broken it down into digital assessment tools, instruction and learner independent study tools, instructor sites for resources and lesson plans, and OALCF friendly websites. It is not the end all and be all of lists. It's missing a lot of things. It is just a listing of what we have tried and talked about. There are many more great sites out there. And like I said earlier, this webinar could go on for hours. So, whoops, all right, I'm going to go off script. <laughs> we want to know if you have an instructors group in your region. In the upcoming year, the Common Frontline Focus Group would like to extend the focus of our digital resources to also include Francophone resources and those for the deaf. We were also interested in maybe having a big group, common frontline focus group online. 
for our year-end meeting, we were discussing the, the, the possibility of inviting all of you to one of our common frontline focus group meetings to help us even further our digital curriculum information and resource list. So we want to know, do you have an instructors group in your area? Great, looks like it's not very common. I wonder if that 16% are all members of the common frontline focus group. Great. Okay, so if you don't have a regional instructors group, are you motivated by what we've said about our work to start your own? Well, that's great information to have. Thank you very much. Okay, so this digital literacy curriculum was developed by Literacy Link Niagara and the Common Frontline Focus Group. It's a product of the reverse mentoring project that they started. And you can find more information about it at the link right there on your screen. And now it's time to open it up. Do you have any questions? Deborah wrote, do you use the discussion board that CLO and Contact North have available for this field? No, the Common Frontline Focus Group hasn't done that yet, but that's nothing, no reason why we couldn't. Sarah has put up the evaluation, and given you time to fill that out, but if you have any questions, I'm available. So Joanne wrote, can you please repost that link to your resources that was available two slides ago? Yes. I believe that is all part of what Sarah will be sending you. Correct me if I'm wrong, Sarah. No, you are correct, Jackie. I have the uh, resources that Jackie's been sharing this afternoon, and I will be following up the, the webinar with Jackie's presentation, uh, with the list of resources, and with the links to the, the webinar and the location of where all the webinars are posted and all of the resources can be found. Thank you. Jim is asking where he can get more help using Google Classroom and Literacy. I can't answer that question. However, if you contact Gay Douglas from the email address on the last slide and send that question to her, I can see if Andrew would be willing to do a presentation. I think he'd be thrilled to do that. He's in the process of teaching me. Jackie, it's Deb Flynn here. I also think that we might have some of that information from um, Alpha Plus. Yes. Oh, there, Maria was just uh, responding that uh, they also have some of their things, and we can go to, um, she's left an email there, info at alphaplus.ca. They would, um, and they have webinars, like I've used some of their webinars, and they've covered some of those Google apps, so they would probably be a really good resource also to help. Perfect. Thank you. Thank you, Maria. I had to say that I was a little jealous when you put up all that quill.org information. <laughs> <laughs> and I wondered if anybody else was going to say, what, but we have a quill in Ontario that does some good things too. Now you're on our resource list. I know. You just can't see it. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I'm just being fun. Anyways. Um, I'm really happy that people are filling out the evaluation. Don't forget to put your name in. There's a $25 gift card. We really want to hear from you. This has been a wonderful opportunity. I want to thank you very much, Jackie, for the presentation today and the detail that you gave about each of the sites. Because I don't work with learners, um, and being at a network, 
I, you know, I don't get, I hear about all those sites, but I don't get to see or, he, you know, get a chance to look at the detail behind the, behind the screen. And it was really nice of you to share that with us today. Really well, appreciate it. I find that we try to pick the, the, the sites that help us the most. And a lot of these uh, give us time, time to mark, time to tailor. Um, if I have my group all warming up together, I can check my phone messages and I can um, print off specialized work for someone who's struggling. So having these tools is very helpful. And I know Google Classroom has really transformed how we work with our adults on the spectrum. Andrew is phenomenal and, and because social skills and conversing uh, is difficult for a lot of those students, him setting this up to talk about things like personal hygiene and whether or not they did their shower checks that day, because those are issues for them as well as literacy issues. So he can talk to them about things online easier than face to face. That's excellent. It's been very interesting. I don't see any more questions coming up. No, it looks good. Well, thank you everyone for coming. And we look forward to you emailing Gay if you're interested in doing a great big Common Frontline Focus Group meeting in June. And I'd like to step in and thank Jackie, who's been so professional in her presentation this afternoon. And um, Gay had planned to join her, but Jackie um, was, was just fantastic. and has spent uh, a lot of her own time uh, to make sure that uh, she was comfortable and, and so able in presenting. So thank you. And thanks to Deb Flynn for uh, moderating this afternoon as well. It's a pleasure working with you. Thank you, Sarah. And just as 